Pies fans. We are from Lulig Street, brought to you by Subway. Got a massive show in store for you today, so let's jump straight in. Pebs is here as always, and Caff, you made the long trip down to Casey on the weekend. How did you see the game? Yes, mate, got down to Casey on the weekend. Um, obviously, another road trip for the boys. Uh, down in windy conditions, as always, down there. Uh, special occasion, we had the skipper's 50th game, so great to see for him, and it's been magnificent ever since he's come to the club. That banner's bigger than North Melbourne banner last week. Wagner, it's a very good banner. Uh, Corey Galt started very well, kicked two goals uh, in the first quarter. What was a great start for the boys, managed to kick away and four goals to one in that first quarter. As I said, it was a, it was a great start. Um, kicking, also... kicking with the breeze helped for that uh, first quarter with um, Corey Galt uh, taking some really good contested marks along with Stilly. Yeah, absolutely. And also great to see was the return of Darcy Moore, who came on after quarter time and played in defence and uh, seemed to pick up where he left off before he became injured. Uh, also... playing against AFL quality players there in Jamar. Spencer and doing a really good job for us. Yeah, yeah, it's been fantastic all year. Also, Youngie and Reedy continue their recovery uh, back from their injuries, and we'll touch on those guys a little bit later. It's great to see them back and getting some footy uh, into their legs. Had a couple of injuries uh, which really hurt us in Michael Still and Jeremy Taylor. Uh, we'll touch on those guys a little bit later, but in the end, those injuries uh, and the rotations that we had to have probably limited the bench in the last quarter and really affected uh, the result of the game in the end. Yeah, it did a little bit. You know, we, we had limited rotations with other players throughout the whole game. And to get uh, an injury early with Taylor and then an injury late was still really affected our rotations and our ability to keep our power at the football. Does it make it hard to coach when you're down on rotations, first? It's frustrating. I can tell you it's very frustrating in the box. But, you know, you just deal what you deal with. Um, but, uh, you know, the boys really pleased with the way the boys fought it out. They, um, we got against the breeze for that last quarter and they fought out really well. Uh, touching on those uh, injuries, you can see still there with one goal. He he uh, did bit damage to his uh, hammy in the last quarter and um, the we won't know the full extent of that uh, injury until we get the scans back. So, um, yeah, look, he's been our uh, predominant goal kicker throughout the, the past three or four weeks and we're going to have to uh, fill his void. And they're the player rankings for this week. Uh, obviously, good spread. Uh, Paddy Conezes and Corey Gold in the elite category. And great to see uh, Mason Cox down there getting into the top five. It's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing effort uh, after only seven games of footy. And also, Reedy off, off three quarters getting into the above average category. So, really strong performances there. Now, VFL match reporter Sam Gaston was very excited to see the forecast of clear skies at Casey on the weekend. So happy that, in fact, he's still there. He is always still there. Sam, what do you have in store for us? Thanks for that, guys. Well, Casey Fields. I mean, some people say it's the MCG of the Cranbourne area. It's a pleasure to be here today. Unfortunately, I can't be coming to you on better terms. Uh, we're still recovering from a four-point loss at the hands of the Casey Scorpions on Saturday afternoon. It was the return of Darcy Moore, and after the game, I caught up with Dale Tapping and Ben Reid. You just lick your wounds and um, take it on the chin and move forward. Like, it um, wasn't our turn today. So, um, but, yeah, I'm pretty proud of them. I thought they... Thought they stuck at it, you know, to work into the wind the last quarter, and yeah, and there was some chances there late that we, you know, could have plucked the mark in the goal square and those sort of things. So, um, yeah, look, strong overall effort in terms of um, you know, just giving to what we needed to do, and yeah, obviously elements of our game we need to keep getting better with. But yeah, and there's always going to be that, particularly um, at this level, given the yeah you know, the, the the group that we got, you know, predominantly a pretty young group. Just a building block again and uh, good to get through another three quarters. It was just unfortunate the boys couldn't get the win today. I thought we um, thought we played pretty well. Um, we contested really well inside and um, it was just unfortunate. I suppose we didn't kick quite kick straight as we would have liked and um, if we did that, I think we would have got a good win. Oh, I'd love to be back now, mate. But uh, look, I just, I just build my fitness up again. I mean, I haven't played for, uh, for, you know, for probably 12 weeks, so um, it's good to just get through. I'm feeling fit, which is the main thing. And um, as I said, I'll just keep putting my best foot forward. Now this week's uh, fan vote, we had a very, very special guest. Uh, flew him all the way from Perth. Some would say the better looking uh, sibling of the family, uh, Tommy Wagner. So we'll see what he's got to say in the crowd. Uh, we'll go with three with, uh, with Marshy across half back. Uh, two to, uh, to Sam Dwyer and uh, one to, uh, to Goodyear. A closing message to Wags. I've been walking around all day giving autographs. People thought I was uh, was Marcus Wagner walking around. Unfortunately, mate, I've had to uh, to pick up the mantle of club president here, actually taking part in the game today. I've flown across from Perth to be here. Uh, unfortunately, you couldn't uh, catch the train or drive down from 20 minutes up from St Kilda Road. So, uh, mate, next week you better be here. 
better looking version. <laughs> I'd say he's more <laughs> the, the bolder, older looking version. Oh, that, that's the word getting around. There's so. a bit of Monty Burns about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's a bit, I'd say a bit of Peter Stepanovic. He's quite sharp there, but I'm pretty sure Peter wouldn't have uh, 10 cans of beer before he goes on, uh, on camera. But that's Some uh, say he would, the point. Some say he would, though. Well, maybe he would, yeah. Very true. <laughs> now, my fan vote, uh, Subway fan vote, is... Jonathan Marsh, who played an outstanding game in our back line, is providing uh, some aerial power. We can see in the package here, and he's uh, laying them off or taking them on himself. He's uh, holding up really well in, uh, in that back line. He's providing with great ball movement once he's uh, been solid in defence, and he's uh, using his leg, which he's got lots of uh, power running in. His, uh, his improvement this year has just been massive, and it's credit to him. He's put in a lot of hard work, and starting to see that reward for, for the effort that he has been putting in in these games. Yeah, let's not forget he come off that massive hamstring injury uh, when he was showing a little bit of form last year. He was on the verge of AFL, an AFL call-up, but uh, look, he's, uh, he's really starting to hit his straps now, and he's my... Uh, my Subway, my Ivanhoe Subway <laughs> player of the week with 14 disposals and eight marks. What a, what a great picture oh, that is of Marshy's. Oh, beautiful. Now, we've got uh, a new segment in the wings uh, this week. So it's going to obviously touch on uh, a few of the boys that are coming back from injury that we spoke about earlier, and Clinton Young, uh, Darcy Moore, uh, and Benny Reid, obviously, as well. So let's have a look at the highlights here. Obviously, Darcy Moore, as we said earlier, it's his first game back from that hamstring injury that we had. Um, obviously. Pretty happy that it wasn't as bad as initially first thought. So great to have him back, because we said he's, he's played some great footy, and you know he's been on the verge of coming in and playing some senior footy. Yeah, as I, as I touched on earlier, him and Reedy were on limited game times, and while they were on the ground for their for their duration, they were just electrifying. You know, the defense held up really strong, um, and they provided you know with, with great ball movement, which 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 is really handy um, in that role. Yeah, Clinton Young, his second game back, set out the first quarter, uh, so obviously then came on and. As we know, pr provides that run and carry and that long kicking to our to our forwards um, and, that, and that senior leadership as well that you know the boys would be really happy to have you out there. So he managed to have 15 disposals, four inside 50s, which is great to see, uh, and three tackles as well. So he's getting in it and doing some of the hard work as well. Yeah, he was good. His leadership's really good. Um, Youngie back there um, probably wasn't his greatest day, um, but he, he did provide us with um, some great ball movement into our forward line. Benny Reid, obviously his second game back as well, and uh, we know what he brings to the table, uh, All-Australian uh, footballer, so great to have him back, 17 disposals, 7 rebound 50s, and um, you know, hopefully those three boys can keep building, uh, we're going to see them in the senior side not too soon. Yeah, absolutely, who are we going to push out, out of our senior side, that's a big question. They're performing very well up there, so that's what we want, competition for places, which is, builds a strong club. So. Absolutely. Now this week's social outer comes from Twitter, with Patrick asking Pebs, how's the development of Mason Cox been? And will we be seeing him in the AFL anytime soon? Good question, Pez. That's a fantastic question. And Big Cox is performing <laughs> really well from week to week. Um, as you can see, he's taken on AFL quality Ruckman every week. You know, Jamar Jermaine, and Spencer. Jamar and Spencer um, this week. Um, look, he's, he's doing his absolute best. He's trying his heart out. Um, but it's going to be a, a few oh. more weeks. It's going to be... Uh, it's not something that's going to come straight away so yep. he needs the experience from week to week so um he's but hitting the scoreboard a lot as well he is he? hitting the scoreboard he's, he's nearly kicking on average a goal a game which is which is fantastic for a ruckman but um look he's going to need the um, experience from week to week to, um, to get there okay. as you can see our, our letter we uh fell down a spot uh this week um with casey taking our eighth spot um which we want to get back this week we are going down to Vic Park, back to Lily Street this week, which has yeah. been strange. We haven't played uh, there much this year. This is only our second game down there. It is our second game, and we're looking to get to... Uh, Perks of the VFL fixture. Yeah, we're looking to hit the uh, winner's ball this week. 11am um, before the uh, big game at the G at 1 o'clock, so um, hopefully all our fans can get to uh, get to Vic Park before before the um, game at the MCG. Well, that's us for another week. Obviously, big day this Sunday with a double header. Uh, yeah, make sure you get down to the MCG after the Vic Park game. Let's break the record for a GWS crowd on Sunday. We need to get 45,000 down there, so let's get that Easy. done. And uh, we'll see you next week after two big Collingwood wins on Sunday. Go Pies!